Hello everybody and welcome to the second Python and Pandas tutorial video in our video series. What we're going to be talking about in this video is some of the basics of Pandas as far as terminology is concerned and basically what these words actually mean, what Pandas is, what an object in Pandas is, and all of this. So despite the fact that some people might be frustrated with the you know, fact that we're not actually coding anything yet, it's imperative that you understand what a data frame is, what a series is, what can we do with them, what are their characteristics, and also what can we do with pandas? What can we expect ourselves to be able to do? That way if we come across a problem, we can work around that problem and figure out much quicker what is might even be going wrong. So it's just definitely essential that you understand what these things are. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing uh, that I want to talk about is one of the most basic pandas objects, and that's a series. So generally, you're going to see series, and let me go ahead and just make this multi-line comment. So you're going to see a series, and basically what a series is, is a series is a one-dimensional um, array, and it's much, it's going to act a lot like a NumPy array. So you can pass a series through, like, as if it was a NumPy array, and do NumPy uh, operations on it, for the most part. There's some that are not going to work, but most of the operations are going to work as if a series is a NumPy array. So uh, the other thing too is you can put any data type in a series. So this means strings, integers, floats, but also any Python object, right, and other things. So any data type can go in there. So the hackability of that is actually quite large, and maybe we'll go into that at some point, but you can put anything in there, just like you can put function in a dictionary and you can do some really cool stuff like that um, so anyway we'll maybe hit on that later so again it's just a one one dimensional um, numpy like array it's not really a numpy array but it's much like a numpy array and can be treated like a numpy array um, you can put any data type in there and you can also like it's a NumPy array, you can do vectorized uh, operations. And finally, generally, a series is denoted with a lowercase s. So series equals s. So generally what you'll actually see is something more like this. s equals series, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, so that's series. Um, the next thing, honestly, series is not too useful unless you, like I wouldn't, Generally, you're not using it. You might use it for ints, I suppose. Ints and floats, you'll probably use it. Um, and you might use it for the vectorized operations. But generally, what most people want pandas for is not series. They want it for the following thing. They want it for data frames. Now, a data frame is a two-dimensional NumPy-like array. And again, any data type can go through there. Um, this is denoted with a lowercase df, so a lot of times you see df equals and then data frame and all of that. Um, also, I wouldn't, um, 2D can sometimes be confusing, okay? So two dimensional just means there's only two dimensions, but this basically, you can almost think of it as um, like a table, right? Any table is a two dimensional thing, right? You don't have three dimensions, it's just a flat box. So a two dimensional, um, array, you can have a million rows and five columns. Okay, so that just sometimes people get confused about what a dimension is. Um, so just trying to uh, clarify that. So um, a data frame also, both of these, uh, the series, even though it's a one dimensional NumPy array, still can have um, a label, right? So it can still, you can still label that column. So it can have a name and a data set besides just being series, right? Series can still have a label. Same thing with data frame. Every uh, column can have a label. Now, and then the rows, generally the label for a row is an index. So you'll hear, hear index with pandas a lot as well. Now, index is basically what is all of our data associated with, I suppose, is a good way to put it. So say you have a bunch of data that's based on time. So you've got like maybe stock prices, okay? And you've got open, high, low, close, and date. You're probably gonna index that data by date, not close. I mean, you could do it by close if you wanted, but you're probably gonna do it by date and you're gonna order it by date. 
But you could order it by close, and you could index it by close and order it by closing price and all that. You could do all kinds of stuff. So anyway, the index is just basically uh, what the data is associated with. And you can specify the index. Generally, pandas is going to say the first column is the index. But you can change that all you want. So now, um, those are basically, I mean, there's other um, terms with pandas. But these are the terms that you definitely want to understand. You're going to see series. People talk about series. You're going to see data frame all the time. And you're going to see index and indexing and all of that. So now, what else uh, can we do with this stuff, right? So these are your um, basically your your objects, okay? And so what can we do with a series and a data frame? And then series and data frames, well, data frames have indexes. What can we do with that? Well, we can we can do slicing, which basically just means you know selecting data. So if you take a slice of a list, for example, you can take element. 25 to element 500 of that list. That's a slice of that list. Um, and so you can specify, select, or you can select specific bits of data. Um, you can re index, which is you can define, redefine what the index is. You can order by that index and all of that. You can also order by other columns if you wanted to. You can also uh, move columns, um, slash reorganize. And you can do uh, do mathematical operations. So on each row or on rows. Um, so here you can do you know you could say I want column one plus column two to be equal to column three or you know like column three is going to be column one plus column two. Uh, so you can do this very very quickly and easily by row. Um, if you want to reference prior rows, uh, referencing prior rows. Hard but possible. Um, there are a few built-in commands like difference and some other ones. Um, there's also built-in uh, moving averages, um, referred to as rolling means in pandas, and then also um, uh, standard deviation. Uh, that's built in um, to pandas very simply. Um, finally. Um, we have graphing. So graphing it uses matplotlib, which is why I told you you might want to go ahead and get matplotlib. Uh, graphing is built in to pandas and actually will a lot of times import matplotlib for you. You might not have any idea that you're using matplotlib, but you are. Um, and graphing is super simple. And what I mean by that is with graphing, you can basically take your data frame, you can load it into matplotlib. So if you have, uh, let's say you've got a stock file, it's got date um, and a date stamp of pretty much whatever format, date stamp, open, high, low, close. You can read that in and say, I want to graph that data frame, and it will graph that data frame. And you don't have to do anything else. And that is just really nice. I mean, matplotlib is, is a great uh, module, but if you've used, or if you go from pandas to matplotlib, especially plotting date format stuff, uh, you'll realize how much pandas does for you. I mean, just the fact that it like seems to, um, it's a good word for it. Intuitively plot uh, some of the stuff that you'll feed it is very impressive. Um, so you can easily do like histograms, you know, bar charts, and you can do like linear charts, line charts, line graphs, all that kind of stuff. Do a lot of really neat stuff with matplotlib very quick, very easily with pandas. So that's a quick uh, run through of the terms that you really need to understand right away. Um, you need to know, understand what a series is, what you can do with a series. Basically, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, one thing I did not really mention here, it's like a NumPy array, but also series and data frames, um, dictionary-like. Uh, so they can act like dictionaries too. Um, this is also dictionary-like. And what I mean by that is you could say DF. So most people, like I said, they're gonna say DF equals data frame, blah, blah, blah. You could say DF and then whatever the name of say column one is, you can reference it just like that. And that will be the whole column. And so it acts like a dictionary. And you can do a lot of dictionary commands with it. And again, just like you can feed uh, functions through dictionaries, you can feed a function through here and other Python objects through here. And so this means you can do a lot of really quick operations. So even if you're not trying to do vectorized calculations or really super intense uh, mathematics, you can still utilize uh, the structure of pandas 
uh, to do a lot of quicker processing than you ever thought you might. So anyway, we might, maybe after I'm done with the basics, I'll show some like pandas hacks because you can do a lot of really, really cool stuff with this. So anyways, uh, that's going to conclude the second video. Um, in the next video, uh, we'll be getting into some coding, so don't worry. Uh, but it definitely is necessary to understand what these are, what we can do with pandas, and um, have a general understanding of what these data sets are so we kind of know what we can and can't do. So anyways, if anybody has any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the section below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all of the support and subscriptions, and until next time.